Well, hey, EVTV. Welcome to the weekly EVTV EU update from New Electric in Amsterdam. I'm Anna Koppenborg, and what do we have for you this week? A um, couple of news and updates on our projects. Uh, we built our own little uh, EVSE 22 kilowatt type 2 uh, level 2 charging station. Uh, I'll show you that. Uh, we have the 818 that we're working on and a new secret project that I will reveal uh, in just a little bit. Um, but first, I'd like to do a quick shout out to my home built project, which turns two today. Joya Bo, my pride and joy. My little daughter is two today. So, uh, daddy loves you. <laughs> Happy birthday, girl. So, in EVTV news, uh, we have our very first home-built EVSE 22 kilowatt charge equipment. EVSE actually stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. I had to wiki that shit. I couldn't just find it out. But um, we were talking about this for a little while now, uh, since we've gone to England, and soon we will be announcing the uh, partnership with Main Pine in making these products available for the EU space, and hopefully once they get their uh, uh, Type 1 J1772 offering in the high power levels uh, for the states, who knows, we can start kicking that project, uh, product over to uh, the other side of the Atlantic. Right now, we're going to start out for the EU market space, because as we mentioned in previous weeks, um, here in the EU, we often have three-phase service, and we can easily get three-phase 32 amp plugs. These are the CE Menica standard. And my shop has two of these, uh, any normal marina, any normal uh, 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 RV camping spot. You know, there's probably about 10,000 places that I could plug this into just in Amsterdam alone. But there's only four 22 kilowatt charging stations or areas that you can go to, for instance, if you have the new Tesla Model S. Well, that simply will not do. And of course, there's a couple more companies that know about the DART in EVSE products uh, 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 helping you connect up to that power level. Uh, GE will be uh, now marketing its watt station here in the EU uh, at about uh, starting at like 1800 euros. Um, Menica's is jumping into the fray and starting at about 2200 euros if I'm right or no 18 no 18 and then the 2200 for the Menica's 22 kilowatt. Um, we're going to see if we can get that same quality uh, level of components, um, but keep it under a thousand bucks for those that want to install wall mounted units or maybe even a little bit less if you have the um, mobile unit. Anyway, so what goes in and what goes out? Uh, as I've said, this is the CE uh, five prong plug. It has uh, neutral three phases in earth and you can plug it into any uh, um, mating plug. Then on the other side, we need to have the Type 2 Menica's pistol grip uh, that'll do up to the 22 kilowatt level, no problem. But of course, it's not just plug to plug, there's a box in the middle. Now please excuse my box because it's a, it's a kludgy over engineer kind of thing, but it'll work since we want to be able to take it out on the road with our 818 once she's finished and uh, have mobile plugging uh, charging on the go. Um, let's see how I can best show this to you. I think I will oops, pull this over to the side of the trusty GoPro and do a little show and tell of the interior. Off comes the lid. And like uh, Kevin Sharp was saying in the video interview last week, uh, people like to make it more uh, complicated than it really is. If we look at it, here we have a main pine EPC control unit. This one is rated for three phase 32 amp. And this control unit is basically what's going to do the handshake with whatever's on the car side and let it know like, hey, I've got this much input power. Are you ready to receive power? And yes, tell me uh, uh, how much you would like. Then it is the charger's responsibility to take up to the max that the box can provide and or to start ramping down, say for instance, if you're reaching the top of your charge level and or if anything else would happen, something needs to shut off. Now, as a little backup and uh, uh, um, after the handshake, of course, it's not the unit itself that will be uh, putting through the power levels. We have a, a 40 amp rated contactor on each of the three phases. So after the handshake is done, uh, the signal is sent to the contactor and the uh, um, relay closes. 
thus uh, giving the power. And then on the other side, we have an RCDO, which in Dutch we call an aardlekschakelaar, which is really a ground fault switch that if anything would happen, uh, uh, hopefully it'll save some lives. So really, this is all that it comes to. Now we're going to add a little extra in and out, and um, there will be a completed unit with main pine branding that's much lighter, much more efficient, uh, uh, better put together. But, you know, for a startup, uh, this will do fine. Uh, I can close this baby up, use water tight. I can take it on the road, and I purposely left, you know, a lot of cabling uh, on the plug side so that, you know, if we were at a campground or that kind of thing, we could have the cable and they generally have the little flappy deals. So you put them in and you're watertight on that side. Then I'd have a long cable and keep the box, you know, uh, somewhere under a tarp or close to the car or something like that, because we all know it's going to be raining in Holland. So uh, you better plan for that shit. Um, then the other side also has the five meter cable. So uh, we would have space, for instance, here to put this unit wall mounted and then uh, to keep the car, you know, not right up against the wall, but anywhere in the garage will do fine. Uh, we're very excited about this product. And this afternoon, when I actually wire up the new plug that's in the front of the uh, shop, uh, we will go onto open charge maps and let everybody know that there will be free, for now, <laughs> 22 kilowatt charging available here at the new electric shop. And while you're waiting, I'll give you a cup of coffee and show you my electric speedboat. What's that sound like? So pretty excited about that. And going forward, I hope we can uh, uh, help uh, OEM-made cars uh, get the right kind of charging for their vehicles. And in the meanwhile, whenever we see people, we can turn them on to the drive-it-your-own-way electric vehicle components. So um, besides the EVSE, we have been working on the 818. And I think I can best do a show and tell. So I will bring my trusty GoPro and the microphone and take you over to that side. So here we have the 818 in all its current glory. Um, we see that we are now mating stock Subaru components and running gear, for instance, the wheels and hubs. And they are bolted on to the frame with the uh, higher quality, high performance parts that come with the Factory 5 kit. You can see that the, uh, the rack and pinion has been depowered, so it's now not uh, uh, hydraulically power steering anymore in this light form factor. And for the direct feel, this is going to be a, a old school turn it yourself by hand power steering system. But like we're saying, high performance shocks and uh, a lot of variables in uh, putting the toe and the camber and all that good mechanical stuff that I really know nothing about. But I should be feeling the result of it once we get to power around Amsterdam and the countryside in the completed 818. I'll take you around. The front is starting to look slightly carish. The middle is definitely still big boy Lego. And then toward the back is where Ray this week is arriving to get the rear wheel mounts uh, up. And uh, that way we'll be able to set her down, see what she looks like. And uh, while we're still waiting for our new fix of Siemens motors and EVTV components, we'll uh, probably likely get started on paneling and bodywork uh, in the meanwhile. Um, you know, it's been said by, uh, for instance, Jarko Santala in Finland that they're envying us that we're now working with new shiny components and equipment. And uh, hey, I feel you, man. We've been digging through old diesels for a while now, and uh, this is definitely a pleasure. But, um, you know, we're also working with uh, the older donor running gear. So um, for Ray, it's been a lot of uh, dirty work with the old axles and getting stuff bolted around. And, um, you know, uh, it's always going to be that where they ask for, you know, to use the original OEM bolt for certain wheel parts, uh, the bolt's going to be rusty, uh, it's going to break in your hands, then you've got to find a new one. So it's not quite that you um, have nothing to do with dirt or uh, breaking older aging components. Um, there's definitely some extra work to be done on that side. But we're not complaining. It's a lovely project to work on. And like we said, it's kind of like uh, Lego for big boys. 
So this is the 818 right now, and it's not electrical yet, um, but I did mention a new secret project. Hey, since we're not just the boat guys anymore and doing a car, I figured, being in Amsterdam, it is time that we look at high-performance bikes. So we went out, and quick shout-out here to Celsa Manaya of Portugal. He turned me on to this uh, Golden Motor Magic Pi 3. This is a, a BLDC hub motor with integrated controller in each wheel. We'll do one in the front and one in the back. These are rated to a 1500 watt output. So in total we will be turning this into a 3 kilowatt 4 horsepower dangerous monster of a bike. This is helmets and illegal stuff boys. But, you know, that's the way we want it. If it's sedate, it's not worth doing. We want something crazy and something that has at least the potential of really hurting somebody. And uh, with the go power comes new stopping power as well. We have uh, fully disc brakes and uh, actuators and stuff. I really need, I've only just received it. Really need to look at this better. But it's going to be a 48 volt system. Uh, the frame that we're going to start using is my old trusty mountain bike that I've had for about 15 years. She's seen many different wheels, many different components, but the frame itself uh, has always served me well. So we'll see if I can break her, and uh, if so, we'll have to go full suspension. I'll get a new um, shocked front fork at least, so it doesn't throw me off the first time I ride her. But um, we're really pretty excited about this project. You know, being in Amsterdam and being high-performance electric orientated, I uh, feel it's about time we did a bike. So, you know, even though we need a new project, like I need a hole in the head, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So that's our new uh, projects uh, and the state of the shop at the moment. Um, what else is going on outside of the shop? Well, there is the uh, oft-mentioned cabin cruiser that we'll be doing. Uh, winter has hit a little bit, so we're going to push her to uh, maybe late Feb, early March, if uh, uh, weather permits, and we will be taking out the diesel. But at least the whole boat has been uh, recoated uh, on the bottom and has a new rudder. So she's all ready to go and worth, uh, um, we're sure that she's worth converting. So she's right around the corner. And of course we have our Delta Flyer that our new prop should finally be arriving after much waiting and debating. Um, and it should be very interesting to see if we can now get more peak power to water. And especially if at 4,000 RPM, the RPM sweet spot before all the vibration happens, if we can get that you know, uh, 45, 50 kilometer an hour at 4,000 RPM and a certain power output, that would be great and would work perfectly for our Delta Channel crossing. Hey, this is about it for our uh, EVTV update. Uh, please do note that we have a full supply of CAUB CA batteries in the 40, 60, 100, and 180 amp hour form factor. Uh, we can deliver anywhere in the EU from stock and help you out with any project you have going. Um, I have two orphaned uh, 144 volt 500 amp Curtis HPVS combos with the AC75 motors. Uh, they were going to go in a boat project that has fallen through. So if you are doing a boat anywhere in the EU, this might be the system for you. If you are doing a car outside of Holland, <laughs> say in uh, the Isle of Man or England or Ireland, uh, your route to getting road legal is uh, wide open and we'd gladly help you out and maybe uh, kick in a few components uh, just uh, for moving the stuff out and getting on to the next project. Anyways, look us up on ebtv-amsterdam.eu if you're looking for components on this side of the puzzle. puddle. Uh, send me an email at info at newelectric.nl if there's anything else I can do for you. Oh. And our news of the week uh, that I almost forgot to mention, uh, from the 7th till the 12th of February, we will be exhibiting at Boat Holland. Boot Holland, if you uh, pronounce it the American way. This is not a boot trade show, it is a boat trade show. It's in Friesland, where also my uh, by gender name comes from, Orna, in Friesland. 
And um, as part of the Electric Vehicle, uh, Electric Fada Nederland organization, Electric Boating Netherlands organization, uh, we have been invited to uh, take a small part of a booth that was left open by one of the members that couldn't come. Uh, it's a little early in our business cycle to be presenting uh, products to the public, but since we have the EDC offerings and we have a large amount of batteries and I've got cool videos to share with anybody that wants to see it, we will be exhibiting there. So if you are in Holland and have a reason to come, if you are anywhere and you want to come to Holland, come check us out from the 7th till the 12th of February, Boat Holland in Leeuwarden. So that really is it for this week. I hope you keep building because as you can see, we're definitely building and I hope to see you guys soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.